Um, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute in this. Honorable Speaker, um, first I want to join my colleagues in saying it is not in order for cabinet secretaries to absent themselves from answering questions in this house. Honorable Speaker, the purpose of this session was to make sure that the general public of the Republic of Kenya are able to get direct answers to their issues from the people responsible at the policy level at the national government and at the county level, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, when cabinet secretaries fail to attend these sessions, they not only fail the Senate and Parliament, Honorable Speaker, but they also fail the people of Kenya. That notwithstanding, Honorable Speaker, this amendment that we brought to this House to allow cabinet secretaries to appear before us, Honorable Speaker, was a position that was developed by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, led by our party leader, who is now the president of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, when cabinet secretaries fail to appear before this House, they are not only failing parliament, but they are also in subordinating the appointing authority, Honorable Speaker, because this was the position of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration that the answers to the public can no longer be passed through many channels, but should come directly from the holders of the office so that the citizens can directly get from them. This would enable the people of Kenya, Honorable Speaker, when cabinet secretaries visit various parts of this country, to be able to refer them to the questions and answers they give. Honorable Speaker, this evasion of cabinet secretaries from appearing, not only in this session, Honorable Speaker, but even before committees of parliament, must be firmly dealt with, and I concur with my colleagues that we must invoke the necessary powers of this House to make sure the attendance goes up. Honorable Speaker, for the Cabinet Secretary for Gender, Honorable Speaker, this House was very expectant to address the matter of gender parity uh, in government and also in Parliament, Honorable Speaker. This is a matter that has been canvassed in this country for over 30 years. There was only one opportunity available through NATCOM, Honorable Speaker, that this matter was going to be settled once and for all. I was eager myself to ask the Cabinet Secretary who removed the gender agenda from the NATCOM menu, Honorable Speaker, so that women leaders in this country should also not be going around saying we are fighting for women's rights, we are representing women, but the very women are undermining the success of the women. No wonder, Honorable Speaker, the old adage says the enemy of women is actually women. And therefore, failing to appear before this House, the Cabinet Secretary for Gender has actually failed the women of this country. Because this was the opportunity for her to explain what our ministry is doing in order to make sure that that agenda is kept alive and that matter is settled once and for all because we have an administration that is keen to ensure women are involved in leadership and decision-making position in this country, Honorable Speaker. Finally, Honorable Speaker, as a House, I want to agree with my colleagues and even be persuaded further that the fines for an appearance should be enhanced. Honorable Sotsi, uh, Honorable Speaker, had proposed an amendment of increasing the fine to two million. I am now persuaded that it should even go to five million. This kind of contempt can only be met with a harsher punishment, Honorable Speaker. I support. No, Honorable Onyonka Richard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I